the pack soon. Ugh. Hey everybody, it's me, Ryer Appledorn. Welcome to the, uh, we're not in the slammer. We are in the new studio space here. We're here for a couple more weeks. Then we are going to go back into the slammer. Um, we finished our Tiki Rat Rod last night. Very happy that we were able to pull that off. And uh, so, um, time to start working on another project. And uh, since I pulled out uh, my uh, Minicraft 1935 Morgan three-wheeler a couple days ago uh, to make uh, the video of my project updates, um, I thought, you know, I might as well dig in and try and finish that one um, before uh, the week is out. Uh, and so I, I opened it up and took a look inside, and I remembered that I uh, was an idiot back in the winter time, probably just winter craziness, stir crazy. Um, and I took all the instructions for all of my model kits and how to assemble them, and I put them all into a box somewhere so they'd all be in the same place instead of just keeping them in their boxes. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Either way, uh, they're missing, so I'm not entirely sure how. Uh, to build about half the kits that I have. Uh, so, instead of, uh, you know, taking care of that problem and actually finding the, finding those instructions, I'm going to put it off and I'm going to uh, start building uh, this, uh, the fruit wagon kit. Uh, remember, I'm building this stock. And uh, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to try and finish this in a week time. Uh, I'm terrible at setting deadlines and everything, but I'm going to try and uh, finish this in a week's time. And uh, I am going to try and document every day uh, my progress. And uh, so today is day one, and uh, we're going to make a video every day of uh, me building this rat rod. And um, yeah, well, you guys can follow along. So uh, let's open up the box. Okay, so here is the box. And uh, I've already taken the plastic off. I've looked at some of the parts, but um, uh, there are a lot of things in here. We've got a couple sets of tires and these axles, which I can't stand these. I hate them, so uh, we'll have to work with that when the time comes. Here's our glass. Uh, lots of fun chrome bits. Definitely things to steal for other builds, as well as stuff uh, that I can use here. Now, uh, somewhere on this box it says that you can build two complete cars and if that's the case then this is going to be really fun because I think I'm going to build if I can I'm going to build a sick hot rod too uh looks like there's some barrels and uh, some engine parts and uh, cab parts in that um there's the the fruit stand which is useless to me I don't really like the whole fruit wagon thing um and some other stuff there and here is the uh instructions which we'll go through and um, let's see, what is this? This is, oh, these are all the decals, duh, of course. I really like, uh, I normally don't like using decals. They just don't work well for me. But I really like these circusy decals, um, as well as some of the stripes. I think they're just fun. So maybe we'll have to incorporate some of these. Uh, and then, yeah, we just have all of these screw pieces that we have to uh, dig around. We're going to clean them, just soak them in water real quick, or, or just spray them with some uh, window cleaner here. This is a super concentrated stuff. I buy the concentrated um, window cleaner and then I just don't put it down with as much water. Works great for cleaning styrene as well as for uh, cleaning out your airbrush. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these all apart and then I'm going to start building the chassis. So um, I'm going to stop this and then we'll check back in when I have got the chassis uh, mostly all assembled. Okay, so we have the uh, main part of the chassis here assembled and we've got the first layer of paint on this. So we've got the frame, the axles, and uh, uh, drive shaft, and the motor is uh, all in place and all glued together. It's a spindly little frame, uh, but it was a spindly little truck. So, uh, we are also going super, super colorful, as we always do. Uh, the next step is we are going to throw some um, of our weathering paints on this. Uh, so, uh, that is why this paint is so vibrant and bold, because it gets dulled down quite a bit. Uh, we're going to use a, two shades of Model Master's uh, acrylic washes. This is uh, black, and this is the oak. And then we've got tons of Citadel paints. We've got the Nuln Oil, which is a favorite of mine. We have the uh, 
well, whatever this flesh shade is, and um, and then the uh, shade used for the ultramarines. Uh, those three colors, it's a red, a blue, and a black. That will help us really tone down those paints a bit. Uh, and then we will also use a bit of the Typhus Corrosion in combination with the Risa Rust. Um, and that will dull these colors down. Uh, then we will start working on the body, uh, which, you know, this cab, and then the, uh, the fenders, which are in this pile of spruce somewhere. Uh, and we will uh, paint those yellow, I think, and uh, put the decals on, and then whether those, uh, then this will all get glued together. And then we will do an all-over weathering where we take paint, uh, mostly uh, model masters acrylics, put them in the airbrush, and do some spot areas where uh, the rust has come through the paint, and then also lots of dust and dirt. Uh, then we'll go back over it again with some more of the Cit Citadel paints, um, you know, putting little dark areas in. But for right now, we're just going to put our first layer of weathering on the frame, then do more construction on the body. Okay, so we have uh, put on more weathering onto this, and as you can see, it's not quite as garish as it was before, but it is still very colorful. Now, the reason I weathered this way, uh, where I put very, very bright colors down and then a thin coat of um, whatever my dulling is, uh, as well as, um, you know, washes to bring out certain details very over the top like that, is because uh, when I build these, the models don't tend to be the final product. The models are actually serving as a prop uh, for photography. And I t like to take the photographs of my models outside, uh, in the woods, in natural environments. And um, that sunlight is very, very, very bright. And what happens is, is the uh, sunlight will cut, um, or it tends to cut through uh, the weathering. So if you do very light, subtle we weathering, it gets washed out and you get a fairly clean looking car. Um, so finding that balance where the sunlight can cut through and the vibrant colors underneath can come out uh, creates a very unique and uh, very uh, special look which I think um, really benefits my model portfolio. And this is a technique used in a lot of movies. If you get a chance to look at any hero props, you know, the props that are used in uh, or on film, uh, they tend to be overly weathered or, um, you know, weathered in, in this way because... Um, the lights they use are so bright, and those cameras, um, the, 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 the weathering tends to get washed out, or um, you you know lose stuff when you have it subtle. Anyway, so uh, I did a really poor job explaining that, but hopefully it makes sense. Anyway, so there is that, and it's going to look really good uh, once I get these all painted. Here's the cab. Uh, this is an old AMT kit. And you can tell it's old. There's a lot of sprue. There's a lot of, or not sprue. There's a lot of mold lines. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, you know, plastic seeping around the mold. And really, this kit should be retired. Uh, these don't quite fit together as smoothly as they should. But uh, we're working on it, getting it together. I've been kind of shaping it. So I have uh, painted the fenders of the truck, and the cab will go on like that. So you can see it's going to be a very bright little car, yellow and blue. But of course, that's all going to get washed down and there's going to be red accents. So um, I think for tonight, I'm just going to uh, wrap up the cab uh, and you know the, the rest of the paint. Um, or at least try to get a lot of the paint done. And then uh, we'll see. It's about 12.40 in the morning right now. So we'll see how tired I am when I get that done. If I'm ready for bed, I'll call it quits and I'll work on it more tomorrow. Uh, if not, uh, well, we'll just finish it tonight, I guess. So... All right, I'll check back in a bit. Okay, so we did pretty good for uh, just a couple hours worth of work. We have the um, we have the fenders glued on to the frame, which we've already weathered a bit. Uh, and now we will put the uh, or tomorrow we'll put the decals on this, um, and then we will weather that after we put the decals on the cab, put the cab on, put the bed on. Uh, all that's been painted. So all we need to do now is do the interior. We need to decide if we're going to uh, actually upholster it. Um, and uh, then, you know, this will be done. This will be uh, pretty much a 48-hour build, uh, even though it will take us uh, barely any time at all to build it. It's a quick kit, uh, fun, but also nerve-wracking because it is uh, oh, it just needs a lot of cleanup work. Um, but it's looking pretty good. I can't wait to either it because it's going to all blend together really nicely. So thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we will uh, tune in tomorrow with uh, the second step. 
of uh, making AMT's uh, 25 fruit wagon kit thing.